Before moving on, I want to check the crankshaft to find out if it's true. And that's a good idea to do for any crankshaft that you install. But in this case, as I mentioned before, I have heard that there's a possibility that these cranks could come out of spec right out of the box. So I'm definitely going to check it. And I've got a couple of little setups here I made years ago to check uh, some gearbox shafts, I believe. Uh, just a couple of bearings. I've got little legs that I can adjust here to level things out. A lot of people would just use V-blocks, but I have these around, so I'm going to go ahead and use those. And then a couple of dial indicator setups. You'd really only need one to true a crankshaft or check a crankshaft, but it doesn't hurt to use two. Both dial indicators are set up. Hopefully you can see they're both zeroed. So what I'm going to do is rotate the crankshaft and find out how much the dial indicators move. And what we'd like to see is that they don't move at all, they just stay on the zero. We'll find out if that actually happens. So right now I'm seeing that this one will move basically a half of a thousandth because each two marks that you can see on here is a thousandth. That's five thousandths there. So I'm moving pretty much a half thousandth on this side. This side isn't even moving that far. I'm thinking I'm hitting an imperfection over here. So I'll just move that around a little bit and then see if it does the same thing. So I've got it set up again. A little bit different spot on the crank. And let's see what happens now. Yeah, so it looks like I was hitting an imperfection in the crankshaft because at this point they're hardly moving at all. So I'm not even I'm not even getting to what would be the half thousandth mark or anywhere near it in movement. Just a little bit in there, not much at all though. So for me that's great. That's actually way better than I expected. After what I heard I didn't think I would get under a thousandth. But uh, at least this crankshaft is not bent or skewed from the factory. It seems to be pretty true. So that's good news for me. I don't have to mess with it. I can move on. I'll be using a brand new set of CPI 49cc cases for this engine and since this is both a big bore and a stroker and it's a very large bore being 50 millimeter, it needs some clearance work for the crank and the cylinder to fit. Right in the manual Top Performance tells you before installation bore the crank cases to fit the cylinder taking them to 56.7 plus or minus 0.1 millimeter and 19 millimeters deep and then they give you a little uh, drawing down here to show you exactly what that means and then for part number 9926560 which is the 86 cc crankshaft stroke of 44 millimeter it is necessary to bore the two half casings at 76.5 millimeters to fit the crankshaft These 49cc CPI cases that I'm going to use definitely need some cutting because you can see that the crank area here comes in under 74 millimeters. But luckily, I actually built a tool to cut the crank case a while back. And if you want to see that, there's a full video on it. But I'm going to go ahead and use this and open up my crank cases.
close enough for me. So now we'll move on to the other side of the case. The last half came out so close that I left the tool set just where it was. I'm going to try just one pass and see how that works out. Because of the shape of the cutter, the deepest part is right here on the outside edge and then as it moves inward, it slants upward. So I'm just going to have to basically move my cutter in like I'm cutting a smaller diameter and just clean up the very edge here. And other than that, it did a pretty good job of taking uh, all this out in just one big bite. right on and between the two they're 0 0.01 millimeters off so I'm pretty happy with that and the finish isn't terrible on here either and when the cases are put together you can see that that's a pretty smooth seam there I'm gonna do just one more thing before I move on to the bore area of the cases and I've got two dummy bearings here, which if you don't know, those are basically bearings modified for a slip fit. So they'll slip onto the crank and into the cases. I'm going to go ahead and put those on my crankshaft and just see if it actually does fit in the case and how it fits. So here's the crank sitting in the big case half. See, just a little bit of clearance around there. Nothing excessive. Looks pretty good. One thing I actually do like about this is it takes a little less of the meat off the cases than when I typically build the 96 to 103 cc with a 45 millimeter stroke. Pretty much the same thing if I check over here on the small case half. And finally, with the cases bolted together, I can just make sure it turns freely and doesn't hang up anywhere. Looks good. Next up, I've got to focus on getting the bore here to fit the cylinder with this TPR86CC. So I've got to bore this out to about 56.7, roughly, millimeters. And I have a case cutter here by Universal Parts that I've also made some of my own adapters for to work with the Minarelli. And again, I've got another video on that that I'll link in the description. But let me get this all set up and start cutting.
Here's what it looks like after the case cutting tool is finished. I didn't get a very smooth finish in there. But that's right on spec. Well, that's smooth enough. I'm not really worried about a perfect finish. That's roughly what I get checking the board. It's supposed to be 56.7 plus or minus 0.1 millimeters, so that's in spec. And the one final check I wanted to do here is just to put the cylinder studs in and make sure the cylinder actually does fit. Here's a look inside the case so you can see how it looks when it's cut to spec. And you can see that they don't leave a whole lot of room between the cylinder skirt and the uh, cases. But there is a little bit of room, kind of a margin for error there.